Ho! Oh, what do you want to talk about? You want to talk about the uh, some early Buffett stuff. Well, okay. Uh, you, there, there's a picture on the wall in my office of a young Jimmy and a, and a younger me, along with Heather Hume as a child. She's probably got kids older than she was then. And the record Jimmy's holding is not one of his 45s. After I transitioned away from folk music, began to write country music, uh, I signed with Lowry Music Publishing Company in Atlanta, Georgia. And they put me together with Steve Dorff. And uh, he and I began to write. And one of the early songs that we had recorded was this Brenda Lee uh, singing Ruby's Lounge. And the lyric, though, when I go back and look at it today, uh, it makes me realize I was still very close to, to folk roots. Ruby's Lounge was none too clean. Lights never worked on the pinball machine. Saw the floor hadn't been swept in years. When I found out that she had recorded that and we got a copy of the that 45, Jimmy was in town and he came over and He's holding my record, and we have this picture, but what he inscribed on the picture is what was telling. I had gone to the America's Junior Miss Festival because I was trying to help Jimmy get started. He and I were working together. We'd written some things together. He'd recorded some stuff in a little studio that I had with some friends here in Mobile. I just asked, could Jimmy sing to the girls during one of the preliminary nights. And they politely told me no. They wouldn't even let Jimmy Buffett sing to the girls on a preliminary show, which wouldn't have been on television or anything. It would have just been before the Mobile audience. And so when he signed that picture holding my Brenda Lee record, he writes on it, and I may or, not, I may or may not get this exactly right, it's a long way from the America's Junior Miss program because by that time he had gone to Nashville and I think he probably had had his first hits and, and people began to recognize that he was going to be a force to be reckoned with. The first record that he had done in, in uh, Nashville was uh, a song called The Christian with a question mark after it that he and I wrote together, and it was on Barnaby Records, which was owned by Ray Stevens and Andy Williams. And this was after he had, uh, he had signed with uh, Buzz Kaysen, who had just built a new studio out in, at Hundred Oaks. He and I had put together a little management contract which said, in effect, that whatever he made, like I was his manager, and he owed me 10%. Well, when he signed with Buzz, he called me up, and he was really upset, and he said, Milton, Buzz isn't going to sign me if you've got that 10% contract. What am I going to do? I said, Jimmy, forget it. Don't worry about it. I'll tear it up. He said, oh, thank you, thank you. And I did forget about it. Well, let's, let's fast forward about 30 years. His mother, now deceased, Pete's, was... Uh, that was her nickname, Pete. She was, Lorraine was her real name, but she was a lovely lady, and, and, and I was happy to call her friend. And I found that contract. My wife, Margaret, was going through old papers, and all these years later, she's saying, either do something with these pictures and these papers or throw them away. And I go through there, and I find this contract that says, Jimmy owes me 10% or whatever he makes. <laughs> you get what's coming. I called Pete's, and I said, Pete's, let me tell you what I, what I found. She said, what did you find? I told her, I said, I found a contract that says Jimmy owes me 10% of anything he ever makes. And I figure if he's made about $800 million by now, he owes me $80 million. And Pete said, oh, my God, Milton, please, please don't tell him that. He'll have a heart attack. And I said, Pete, don't worry. I told him 30 years ago or whatever it was, I'd tear the contract up. And uh, that contract 
is now uh, framed and hanging on the wall in my office. Jimmy doesn't know that to this day that uh, he might owe me $80 million. Oh, no.